Hello, my name is Justin Bright, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program version 1.2, in which I am attempting to make Kerbals a multi-planetary species. So, it's been a little while since my last playing, and uh, you'll notice that my funds are a lot higher than they were. I've thrown a couple things at the moon uh, since I last played, just because it was the ex kind of the exact same set of contracts that I did previously. So if we jump into the mission control, we can take a look at what... Uh, the latest plan is, and first of all, we are building an orbital station around Kerbin. Uh, needs to have an antenna, docking port, generate power, support five Kerbals, and needs to be in some sort of orbit. So we're going to use this as an opportunity to build kind of a um, basic station, like kind of Skylab style. It's going to kind of act as the core of a larger orbital research station that we're going to leave in orbit around Kerbin. Let's take a look at something that I've been working on ahead of time. The KSS Kerbal Space Station Core. So, this is kind of our basic bit that we're going to be getting into orbit. And this, I'll just kind of walk through this. This is the ML600 Columbus module, which is an experiment uh, running module from the uh, NAMIA Science Mod suite. Um, this is your standard uh, mobile processing lab because we're going to be doing some of that science as well. It's got some batteries attached. This has got some um, solar panels stuck on there. Got a radiator here. Not so much because we need it, I think, but because I think it looks kind of cool. And a hitchhiker container so that our Kerbals have some space to hang out. Then that all plugs into this uh, Tundra two and a half meter hub, which we're going to use as kind of the basis of any further construction. We've got an airlock here and a little uh, cupola back on this side that uh, will let our Kerbals get a nice view. And uh, these are construction ports from the Rubber Dudes construction mod. So the cool thing about those is that when they're connected to another construction port, um, they can be collapsed basically and it'll just connect whatever is on there straight from node to node. So if I had, say, this and then another big set of things here so if i was connected kind of like that then these uh, docking ports would disappear and this would connect from this straight to this and be much more rigid and capable of uh, bearing weight and it would reduce the part count and all kinds of other wonderful things finally we've got an expandable habitat module and then a regular old docking port here on the top so this is what I want the the station to be. Now it's just a matter of trying to get this thing into orbit. And also trying to provide some of this the science stuff for uh, this Columbus module. So plenty yet to do as we uh, to, to build this thing, I think. Or maybe we should just launch this first as a um, as an unmanned module and not worry about the rest of that. It's probably a good idea. And that way I can seal that bit up, which will be nice. And this gives us some room to put some more service bits. And we'll put a uh, we'll put a reaction wheel in there. Stick that on the side. What else is this thing gonna need? Oh, it's definitely gonna want a Kerbal Engineering chip. Throw that on the bottom there. There we are. Now let's get this clamshell. We'll give it three sides is probably fine. Give it a little more force so it gets rid of those silly things. There, this is not particularly aerodynamic. Put a big nose cone on top. That'll get uncoupled. All right. So... That's an intelligent upper stage that's going to allow this thing to get and maneuver into orbit. Um, but then it's going to be kind of left dumb and unmanned until I send up the first crew. What am I missing? I'm missing life support. 
I don't think anything here has any room for life support. No. Here we are. That's nice. So yeah, further modules we can worry about later on, but right now we're just getting the core up here, and then we can start building out horizontally so that it's not so incredibly tall. But this will form the backbone of the station. What else? Oh yes, we're gonna need, well, that'll come up on a later thing. I was just thinking that there's experiments that need to go up, but that can go a little bit later on. Let's see, I think I can put some equipment for the MPL 600 in here. And then I'll be able to actually install those before I, um, before I uncouple. So this is a 40 ton, 40 ton monster, but this will still work, I think. A little bit of torque from somewhere, not sure where. So I'm gonna auto strut this up to the root, all the way up top. And then I'm gonna have, I think this auto strut down to the heaviest part. Hope that'll keep this thing a little st more stable. And we got this little stack tricoupler, which is nice. Put three Kiwis on the bottom here. Then duplicate that twice more. And we'll increase the fuel flow priority on these. And allow cross feed. Which will make this kind of an asparagus stage sort of dealy. But yeah, so that's gonna give us, I think that's gonna be plenty to get us where we need to be. And we don't actually need the fuel ducts, even though it thinks we do. And our auto strut heaviest, auto strut, auto strut. Oh, don't suppose that actually matters. All right, I think this will work. Uh oh, I'm breaking some sort of rule. Ooh, dramatically too heavy and too high all this money we have let's get the final upgrade for the launch pad which should remove all of those restrictions and there we go board is green let's check our staging Alrighty, let's make sure no Kerbals are on board. We want to just send a unmanned mission at this time. Do I have communication? There it is, communications. Alright, let's give this a shot and see how this goes. Alright, first of our ridiculous ships being built here to start our colonization effort. Away we go. Let's, let's hope there's not too much wobble. So I think I've got the auto strut set up here, so this should be fine. Um, in complete stock, this would be. Well, I guess it is complete. Oh, still some wobble. Here, I think it's on. Auto 
strike to the root. Auto strike to heaviest. Yeah, that's a little better. There's still some wobble on the on on either side of um, like docking ports and couplers and things like that. But in general, this is this is actually pretty dang good. Careful now. All right, so now we're headed up in a pretty um, a pretty high arc. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm not actually worried too much about um, efficiency because I have a lot more fuel than I need and a very efficient uh, upper stage that has very low thrust to weight ratio. So what that means um, in a nutshell is that I'm going to push myself up on a really high arc, get myself lots of lag time up in the, um, at the apoapsis of that arc, that suborbital trajectory, and then I'm going to use the, lower sta the upper stage to um, push us slowly into a nice orbit. Unfortunately, the thing that I forgot is that I've got this set up in kind of a pseudo asparagus staging thing, and whoop, let's kick this off. And uh, yeah, so if I had a if I had fuel lines like you would normally have on an asparagus staged booster, you would actually have those the 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 outer boosters would become fuel deprived when those tanks were empty, but the way that the fuel flow priority works is it's a priority system, not a, um, a, uh, a directional channeling system, I suppose. So the priority is to take the fuel from those outer tanks and then pump them inwards, but that doesn't mean that just because it's a lower priority doesn't mean it's no priority, if that makes sense. So even when they're the lowest priority, if they still do get fuel, they don't burn out unless, uh, uh, unless you completely run out of fuel. Alright, so we're headed for a 200 me 200,000 meter orbit, which allows me to uh, have a vessel either come in low uh, and therefore faster to catch up or high or higher to uh, have the station catch up on it. Now we can get rid of this uh, little nose cone thing we had going on. Decouple our fairings. All right. Let's make sure I don't lose communications. Where is that? There it is. That's not quite right. Do we name vessel KSS core? But it's a station, not a base. We'll start our circularization with the big engine, which will run out just before we finish, so I can kick that off. Start the poodle stage for final insertion into this orbit. And then we can actually leave this attached for uh, the first, our first uh, crew, uh, so they can actually grab these experiments and stuff them in the Columbus module, because it doesn't look like I can do anything with them here. But what I do want to do is I do want to finish this circularization burn and then leave this, uh, leave this pusher stage in orbit to, uh, for the Kerbals that I'm going to send up. Uh, to do their assembly of the, the modules and so forth. Because um, I don't think that's something that I can do with uh, just the probes that are attached here. So, got this just about into orbit, and there we are. Get this, uh, the solar panels rotated to the sunlight. Beautiful. All right, so let's poke around a bit at this, and uh, we will start looking into building our first crew uh, module. All right, so we need a couple of Kerbals to uh, really start getting our 
um, start staffing our space stations, uh, start leaving up in orbit, start leaving off on bases and so forth. We're actually going to need a whole bunch of scientists, engineers, and pilots to staff all of these things. And unfortunately, I think that's going to be one of the more expensive parts of running this whole colonization operiza operation. Colonization operization is uh, making sure I have the staff available. So something that I'm going to do is try to do as many rescue contracts as I can. Maybe I'll do this off screen um, just to, to keep the staffing levels where they need to be. Um, we need ideally, oh, here we go, we need some uh, crew members that are not stupid because I think, I may be wrong about this, but I think that Rover Dude's mod takes into account stupidity in some of the calculations for the um, uh, their efficiency and so forth. I may be thinking of extra planetary launch pads, which I do not have installed. But in general, we're going to tend towards less stupid Kerbals. So Meldo is for sure on our short list. Yeah, that price just goes up and up. Uh, but we need another crew. We're looking to staff our... Um, the space station with at least six Kerbals for now. So let's get a scientist. Let's grab uh, BC, the engineer. Let's get another pilot, Rayleigh. Uh, getting pretty expensive. What else do we need? We got two pilots, two engineers, two scientists. Three pilots, that is. Um, well, let's get one more scientist, Sangella, and we'll call it good for now. All right, so our next step is going to be launching a crew vessel up to the space station, which hopefully is going to actually work properly. So let's KSS Discovery Capsule. This is something I built off screen. Um, we have a lovely twin Kiwi uh, booster here. Um, and then a nice uh, terrier based uh, upper stage with um, RCS capabilities and a return capsule for uh, some station science, which is gonna be going on up there. And this is, it's got a crew can on here. So this is gonna let us have just all sorts of Kerbals. Um, oh, one thing I'm just now realizing I don't have is what happens when I land. So we're not going to need a heat shield, but what I think might be important is actually having some landing legs on here. So let's deploy shielded. What does that mean? I don't know what deploy shielded means. We're going to leave that off. Um, so hopefully that doesn't explode. Load. That may be problematic when I try to kick this, uh, uh, what do you call it, this fairing off. Is that going to be long enough? It's not. Hmm. What can I do? Do I just kick it off anyways and hope that it doesn't smash and shatter into a million pieces? Side. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, let's test this on the launch pad. So we're going to save that. And let's just launch this really quick and we'll just play with it on the launch pad and see what happens when I uh, fire off that. Um, what do you call it? When I fire off that interstage fairing that I have set up here. All right, so let's move this up and then we'll just say eeny, meeny, miny, deploy. Well, it comes off a little anemically, but other than that, it seems to be fine. Famous last words, perhaps? All right, so anyways, um, we've got a nice little fairing on here. We've got landing legs, uh, RCS. This is gonna house a couple of experiments the CCF and Adam experiments, uh, which let me actually take a look at these. So the CCF is a capil capillary channel flow experiment, which is something that goes with the MPL 600, which is up on the station. And uh, it should have the equipment up there as well. 
and similar we have the atom advanced diagnostic ultrasound and microgravity which uh, requires four test subjects which is one of the reasons why we're having as many people up there as we will but that requires the ultrasound unit which we've also sent up on the uh, probe so this is going to require a little bit of orbital construction when we get up there i'm not exactly sure what that's going to look like but we have plenty of tools or at least we will as soon as i add tools to the pod just in case i don't think it's going to need any of this but you never know we'll just throw that one in there great and for crew let's send up a whole bunch of rank amateurs we'll send up Rayleigh to pilot and BC our two scientists um, yeah and that'll be the our first crew on our station so here we go let's give it a shot beautiful three two one launch Right, that's heading up, up to the space station. So let's, while I get up to about 100 meters per second to get stabilized in a straightward direction. Pita's craft, oh, that's right, I'm supposed to rescue a Kerbal. I picked up a uh, rescue mission while I was about my other business. Where is, is it a base? It's up there, right? Isn't it up there? KSS core is an EVA. Great. Yeah, word, uh, a word about Kerbal Engineer is this has not actually been updated for version 1.2 in any kind of official capacity. This is something that I kind of scraped off of the dev build and I'm just using at my own risk. So... Let's not worry about any of those issues, and definitely don't bring anything to the developer's attention. Uh, but in any case, it works uh, for our purposes, which is to get a nice rough idea of what the Delta V budgets are that I'm working with, and um, the capabilities of my spacecraft. Uh, those are things that I would love to have in stock, if possible, because just, just, I mean, all this data is great, but I really only need those two data points, is delta V and thrust to weight, and from there you can get pretty much anywhere. All right, we're getting nice and toasty here in the lower or upper atmosphere. Start pointing ourselves towards the horizon to begin to circularize because we actually want to maintain a relatively low initial orbit. Point this prograde. Uh, we want a relatively low initial orbit because we're going to be attempting to get underneath um, and catch up with the KSS. So step one. Well, we don't really want to, well, I think it's probably fine, circularize. I think the better burn time mod is gonna still give us good readings. All right, now let's fire that. Good, those didn't explode or anything, that's great. Kick off our booster stage. All right, now our, oops, oh, that's right. There we go. I still had it on prograde. That always freaks me out just a tiny bit when I try to start turning my spacecraft and then it fights me and then I realize that, oh, it's because I have it on, uh, I have it targeting a particular direction. All right, other thing I can do is I can chuck this little nose cone off behind me. It has done its job. Now we have our very lumpy service module. Oh, I'm supposed to be burning. Goodness gracious. But with that, I'm out of time, so we'll have to rendezvous in the next episode. I'll see you then.